are a few basic items we'll need to install WordPress, whether it's running locally or remotely. PHP for running the scripts, a MySQL database for storing the site data, and the WordPress files themselves. For this example, we'll be using MAMP, but you can use any environment that gives you the ability to run PHP and MySQL. You can also follow these same basic steps on a remote server. The pro version of MAMP will allow you to set up multiple sites with specific names that run simultaneously. With the free version, we can still have multiple sites using one of two options. You can either make all your sites a subfolder of a single directory, or you can run your sites one at a time by changing the path to the document root directory. In MAMP, if you go under Preferences, Web Servers, you can change the document root. By changing this path, you can have multiple sites in different locations. I'm going to put all my sites within a subfolder of my Sites folder, so I'll choose Sites and select. And OK. Now make sure you start your servers. Next, open the Web Start page. From here, we can go under Tools, PHP My Admin. Here you are given an interface for managing the databases. PHP My Admin is the same tool you'll find on most shared hosting services when you access their cPanel or Plesk administration, so these same steps should work on those hosted services as well. Click into Databases and create a new database. We'll name this Local WP. Now that we have the database set up, we'll come into Privileges and Add User Account. We'll name this WP User and our host name will be localhost. To generate a secure password, you can click the Generate Password button or check the notes associated with this video. Make sure that you save the generated password somewhere so that you can use it for our WordPress install later. We want to check all to make sure that our user has global access. And then we'll click Go. We now have a database and a user. We can proceed to installing WordPress on our new local setup. We start by visiting WordPress.org. From here we go to Download WordPress. Once we have WordPress downloaded, we can unzip the WordPress file and also show our Sites folder. We'll copy the WordPress folder into our Sites folder and then we'll rename this localwp.dev. This will serve as a test location for me to install WordPress. Back in the browser, when I visit my website, we can see all the project folders or domain names that we've set up. As I mentioned, it's a good idea not to install WordPress directly into your sites folder, but instead organize your sites folder by different projects or domain names that you have. You can then run multiple installs of WordPress all from this one site's folder. Or you can go into MAMP and set your root document folder to one of these subfolders. We can get to the installation script by clicking on localwp.dev. However, if we come back into MAMP and stop our servers, If we try to visit the site now, it won't load. This is a reminder that if you're going to be working with WordPress locally, you need to make sure that MAMP, or whatever software you're using for your server, is up and running. Whenever you visit a fresh install of WordPress, if the setup has not been completed, you will automatically be redirected to the setup wizard, which will perform all the hard work for you. The wizard will step you through two short forms. The first will ask you for database information, and the second will ask for some basic site information. Let's go ahead and step through the wizard. I'll go ahead and select English as our primary language. WordPress reminds us of the information we'll need to get started. Let's go. The first form asks for our database information. 
The database name was local WP, our username was WP user, and the password is the one that we copied from our generated password. Our database host will equal local host. And finally, we have the table prefix. Before we continue, I want to emphasize that every site can be hacked. However, there are certain measures you can take to make this a little more difficult. First thing that you can do is change the WordPress database prefix. This can significantly reduce the chances of SQL injection attacks on your WordPress database. Often hackers target sites in masses where they are targeting the default WP underscore table prefix. Instead, we'll call this local WP. We're ready to move to the site information. Make sure that you enter a descriptive title for your site. Local WordPress test. Another helpful security measure is to not use common usernames like admin, editor, or things like that. These can easily be guessed by people trying to hack your site. Instead, I'm going to use something called site underscore admin, spelled with a number of special characters. WordPress automatically gives us a secure password for this user. Make sure you take note of this password before moving on. Finally, I'll enter my email. Notice under Search Engine Visibility that we have a checkbox here. This doesn't really matter on a local install because search engines can't access your site anyway. After we install, we see this success page and we can log in. If you used an automatic installer from a web hosting company or downloaded an older version of WordPress, it could install an outdated version. There may also be themes or plugins that are out of date. You can come into the WordPress updater here. If there are WordPress updates, it's a single click. To update plugins or themes, you can select all the plugins or themes you wish to update, and then the Update button. Now we can see that everything is up to date, and we're ready to go. If you're just starting out with WordPress, I want to point out that when you're in the admin area, you can go to the front end of your site by clicking on the name of your site. Likewise, if you're ever logged out of WordPress and starting on the main URL, you could always add wp-admin. And then you can log in, and you're back in your dashboard. If you stay logged in, you could get back to the admin area by clicking the name of the site again. Click once to get into your website, and once more to get back into the dashboard. So you should now have WordPress up and running on your computer. There's one thing that I want to point out here. The default emails that WordPress sends for example, if we log out and we want to choose lost your password, WordPress will not be able to send out this information if it's running locally on your computer because the email service will be blocked. What I want to show you in the last video is how you can enable WordPress to send out email even when you have it installed locally on your machine.